Hey folks, so today we're going to go surf fishing on the Oregon coast and this video is perfect timing because I have a surf fishing tournament coming up on August 7th and there's going to be a lot of new people out there um, who don't know what they're doing or um, or they're just curious on how to catch a surf perch. Um, so let's start first with how to tie the uh, rig and what you're going to need is your number four hook and a two ounce weight. So that's really all you need. Now I prefer a disc sinker. Um, there's many out there. There's like a pyramid, um, teardrop, and so on, okay? You can use anything you want. I just prefer a disc sinker because it tends to roll less. And for the hooks, I'm going to use the Gamagatsu circle hooks. I began using circle hooks about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, and I really like them. Uh, when they hook the fish, uh, the fish stays on there pretty good. They don't come off. The uh, rig we're going to use is called a high-low rig. Uh, it's a very effective rig. Um, many people use it on the Oregon coast, um, pretty much anywhere on the west coast, really, when they're surf fishing. Uh, it's very easy to tie and it's very effective. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this yellow rope to, so that way it's just easier to see. Okay, so imagine this is your main line, okay? You're going to bring it together and we'll let it come to focus there we go and then you just twist the top lines together you twist it um i go about six times but i won't go that many um in this video so there you have it you have that uh loop right here and you bring the bottom loop down here right through the loop that you just made so it's gonna go just like that all right and then you kind of pull that through Okay, it's important folks, once you have that loop right there, you just want to hold it with your mouth. And then you uh, just kind of pull these lines, pull them apart until they cinch up, okay? Just like that. So that is your dropper loop. This is somewhat kind of hard to tie, but you know, as everything in life, the more you do it, the easier it gets. The key thing to making this work better, to make it easier, is once you pass that loop through that, um that twisted loop that you made, um, hold it with your lips, hold it with your mouth, and just um, keep uh, keep a tension on that as you're pulling these two lines apart. Also, another thing uh, people uh, tell me is like they have trouble um, threading that loop through the hooked eye. Another thing people tell me is they have trouble threading that loop hook through the eye of the hook. Um, well, that's easy to take care of. You just get another uh, line and you put it through that loop just like that. Okay, so now you can thread the eye of the hook a lot easier with that, okay? Okay, so there is your double uh, dropper loop. Now for the bottom, you are going to tie a uh, weight to it, your two ounce weight. Okay, and there's my weight. Um, the knot you use for the weight, it doesn't really matter. Uh, uni knot, Palomar, your call. Okay, so there it is. That is the high-low rig right there. Back to the weight. If you want to tie a swivel on the bottom here, that's fine too. Um, the swivel lets you switch uh, weights easier um, in case you want to use a lighter or a heavier weight. Now, the best bait I found is uh, gulp sandworms. They work really well for me. Um, I catch a lot of surf perch with them. Of course, you have many, many other options from like live sand shrimp, clam necks, and so on and so on. If you have no access to that, then gulp sandworm is definitely the best bait for surf fishing. These are the two inch camel color, and that's that's the only color I've used. I've used the other color. I have very uh, little success. However, uh, other people use other colors like the red and the natural and they do really well. So, but I just have a lot more confidence in the camel color. Um, and then these ones out here, now these are the ones I dried. And as you can see, they're pretty dry. They're really, really tough. They're a little bit trickier to put on the hook. However, the scent is still quite potent. I left these, actually these have, these are probably about five to six months old already. I just put them in a little jar after I dry them and believe it or not they still work really well. Because they're dry they're kind of tough they stay on the hook forever. You know you can catch fish after fish. I go through about maybe three probably four at the most for each trip. Um, for these ones if you don't dry them uh, they're softer 
and when the fish bite them, they tend to fall off, not fall off, but they tend to get um, ripped up and, you know, they come off your hook a little bit and they're, they're kind of dangling there. The, the silver surf perch tend to do that. They, they kind of nibble at the tail and they pull it off your hook. Um, so you have to reel it in and kind of rebait your hook. These dried ones, uh, it won't do that. Um, they can nibble on the tail all they want. It stays on the hook, not going anywhere. And you can fish with these dried ones all day. So that's why I dry them. I do it for two reasons. One, it, it reduces downtime and two, for economic reasons, okay? So if you get these sandworms, um, you can try to dry them out. I let them sit outside for about maybe three, four hours. If it's windy, I wouldn't leave them out that long. Uh, when it's windy, it's going to dry out much, much faster. So if it's windy, just be careful. Uh, check it every 30 minutes. On average, I dry them out for about three to four hours, okay? And they become super, super tough like that. And they last forever. And believe me, they still work. I still catch a lot of surf perch with them. Right, there we go, folks. Three hooks on, gulp sandworm, two inch camel color. Same old dance. This uh, high-low rig is probably the number one rig used on the West Coast for surf fishing. It's simple. It's very effective. Let's see if we can catch some fish. Yeah, that surf is a little rough. I think we'll be all right. You just got to be careful. Okay. There we go. First cast. Yeah, there's no way I'm getting in the water today, man. Those swells are gnarly. First cast, no luck. All right, second cast is a dud. A lot of people ask me, where do I cast when I'm in the surf? What do I look for? Um, usually the uh, perch, they're hanging out in the foam right here, the white foam where the waves are crashing. And what you want to do is you want to cast beyond the breakers, beyond the white foam. Like that. So I'm casting way, way beyond the white foam. And then I'm just gonna tighten up my line a little bit. Just tighten it. And just kind of hold it there for a little while. You don't want to reel it in. Oh, there's a fish. Oh man, how about that? I'm telling you, I cast past the white foam and then kind of reel it in a little bit and then just hold it. Oh, he came off. Dang it, he came off. I think I had my, my line too tight. But yeah, so see the waves crashing right now? And I just cast beyond that a little bit. Okay, there we go, there's the cast. That was that was well beyond the, the breakers right here. And I'm just gonna tighten my line. And I usually like to finger the line like that because that way I can detect the bites better. Okay. And then I'm just gonna hold it. Now what's gonna happen is the waves is gonna, it's gonna move your bait around. Depending on the size of your weight, it's gonna move it all around and the fish is going to see it. So there's no rush to bring it in. And then, once I think that is enough, I kind of reel it in. When you reel it in, don't reel it in too fast. Go really slow. And then I'm just going to pause. I'll pull the rod a little bit, just to give the bait some action. I'll reel in again, and then I'll pause. So as you can see here, my, my weight is over here now because that's where the surf, that's where the wave has pulled it. So but once it's back, whether it's to your left or to your right onto the beach, you can reel in and then you just rinse and repeat. All right, there's another cast well beyond the breakers. 
reel it in a little bit, just pause, just let it sit there for a little while. And if you want your bait to stay more stationary, just use a heavier weight. I'm using a, a one ounce. So it's pretty light and the wave's gonna move that around a lot. Once it's close to you, bring it up really fast and then uh, redo it. So that's why I like a fast retrieve reel, like a gear ratio of say 6.2 to one, because that way I can reel it in really fast and just make that quick cast again, because I don't like to have too much downtime. Okay, there we go. When the uh, surf is rough like this, I tend to reel in more than normal because my bait is moving around too much. Once I cast out, because it's only a one ounce, the weight's gonna bring it back in pretty quickly. Just had a bite a while ago. All right, <clears throat> bring it in and try it again. That's about it. You can also look for like, like a trough. Look for a trough for a rip current. A trough is usually where there's dark green water in front of you. For the rip current, you kind of see the white foam going back towards the sea. And that's what you want to focus on. I don't see any right here, but there's a little pool here, there's a little trough that I'm focusing on. Oh, that's a fish. <laughs> I thought, thought that was the wave bringing the, uh, bringing my bait back. Man, he is so small. I didn't realize it was a bite. Wow, buddy. Okay, hold on. Boy, you took that pretty deep. Jeez. Okay, hold on. Okay, we got it, buddy. We'll let you go. There you go. First fish was a baby. We need something about three, four times that size. All right, I found this soft shell sand crab on the beach let's put them on the thing with the soft shell sand crab you don't want to wing it out there really hard because it's going to fly right off the hook so you just want to gently cast it all right i got a sand crab out there no takers Try it one more time. There's another one. That's a soft shell. Oh, is that a fish? Yeah, finally, holy moly. That was such a long lull. I'm not kidding, it's been about two hours past. I'm just trying to test out this rod and they're not cooperating. But finally, two hours later, we got this little guy. He's gonna make his way in right now. So far, I'm liking this rod a lot. I can definitely get a pretty good distance on it. You know, it's almost 11 foot. Yep, there it is. Hey, ya buddy. Selfie time. All right, she is a big female. Okay, okay, easy girl, easy. We're gonna let you go. Don't worry, we'll let you go. That's a female. Looks like she's full of babies. So back she goes. Go, 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 go. Okay, here comes a wave, and there it is, right there. She's got it, she made it. Awesome. The short butt here is pretty nice, it's just perfect for casting. I don't like the rods that have such a long butt because it's pretty awkward, and this one, you have such a long real estate that's gonna give you more distance. So yeah, do I recommend this rod? Definitely. Let's give it a couple more casts and see what happens. Maybe we can catch more. The tide is coming up. We're about an hour past low tide. 
So who knows, that, that fish I just caught might be a prelude to something more. Hopefully, we'll see. Come on, fish god, help me out. Is that a fish? Yep, that's a fish. Oh, a little guy. He's too small. It's a little guy. Not very big. Uh, we'll let him go. Kind of similar to the last one. There he goes. There we go. Oh no, it came off. Nope, oh, still on. Here we go. That's a big one. It's a nice fish. Feels pretty solid. We are fishing an outgoing tide, actually, folks. Outgoing and a minus tide. Minus 11 inches. So that's pretty low. Yeah, that's a good size. It's a good size fish. Not bad. Oh, a double! The first... There we go, guys. Double up. Oh! Okay. This little one we're gonna let back. There he goes. Man, he's fast. Oh, there, fish on, guys. Fish on. Maybe it came off. Oh, it came off. Shoot. Oh, man. There we go. He is on that time. I keep on missing bites. I think I missed four bites in the last five minutes. But this guy, finally I caught him. Hard to tell with mono line because of the stretch. Is he a big one or what? He feels pretty good. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's a good one. Not bad. Average size. Yes, sir. That's the male. Good hook set. Right there, folks. Okay, so we're going to make this a last cast. Last fish here. The swell was supposed to be calm until about 9-ish. And right now it is 11. Definitely picked up quite a bit. So on the side of safety, we'll make it one more fish. One last cast. Okay, there we go, come on. Big money. Last cast. Oh, there it is. Last cast, it was, oh my goodness. Feels pretty good. This could be one epic last cast. Oh my goodness. Come buddy. Holy cow. Okay, let's bring him in and see what he is, what she is. I thought I saw a crab. I thought I saw a crab.
Oh. Come on. Feels really big. Feels really big. Come. Don't come off. Oh man, come on. That's a could be a massive one or it could be a double. I think that's a double. Hey, I think that's a double, guys. Yep, that's a double. That's a double. Right there. Double last cast. Oh my goodness. Look at that. How about that? Woo! Wow, that's a big female. There we go, folks. That last cast turned out to be a double. Pretty awesome. All right, that's about it. I'm gonna get on out of here. A lot of fun. The surf's getting rough, so it's a good time to quit. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I enjoy all the support. Have fun fishing, tie lines. Actually, that's a female. This female's gonna let go because she's full of babies. That's a female. Wow. Look at that, let's let her go. Oh, come on, hang in there. Oh, maybe a little bit longer. She's full of babies. There she goes. Perfect. Awesome ending.